two and three mean something. Is that because this individual doesn't have systemic training or? Oh, clearly, he's, he's so, so in order to get, I mean, in order to, to get these statistical analyses and these uh, models for being able to do this more effectively, I mean, do we need to hire like a Stephen Hawking's kind of <laughs> person who's just like this ultra brain Brilliant. guy who, who can go, oh, I get where you're going. I mean, I, I can't yeah. believe that, like, like when I do family therapy, um, I've been through sessions where my head hurts. Mm -hmm. And so I think at some, maybe an emotional level, I'm tracking these multiple relationships. Right. But I don't, I don't have, the, maybe I don't have the mathematical brain to statistically track those yeah. kinds of things. But, yeah. I, but there is something going on when I'm sitting in that room and I can feel that. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, it's interesting. I worked with Dave Kenny, who was the big structural equation model person before the current people, or the structural <laughs> equation model people. Um, and I had this data set with three perspectives on differentiation. And he got very interested in it, and through that data set created something he called the triadic social relations model. And then he and William Cook took off with that. And um, it is that idea that, well, first of all, nobody even thinks about collecting data on three members of the same family, partially because they have it in their head that, you know, how can I put it? If families are a thing, we can measure them as a thing, and we only need one person to tell us what that thing is. Like, somehow we'd all have the same perspective mm -hmm. on a family. And so, you know, for years we've been doing that about parenting, right? You know, you only ask mom, and obviously mom knows everything, and uh, we don't need to... The child behavior checklist, the right. al al version of the child right. behavior checklist. Yeah. Right. We don't need to ask anyone else in the family of anything else. But, but doesn't that, and I don't mean to interrupt too much, but... Uh, at one level, you're saying um, they are, you know, this unit all, is all connected, and so you you have to look at these individuals as a unit. Mm -hmm. But then you're now you're saying, well, wait, but they all have an individual perspective, so it really becomes this both and kind of conundrum. Absolutely, yeah, and I don't think because people have different perspectives on the family processes or whatever it is you're asking them about means that there isn't a system. It just, to me, what's fascinating is, I'll just give you an example. I uh, worked with the, continue to work with the BYU study, the Flourishing Families, yes, uh -huh. and they have multiple perspective data on stuff I'm interested in. And I have similar data at our clinic. So I look at the intra-class correlation for differentiation in clinic couples, and it's, like I said, close to zero. But if I look at it in the flourishing families data, which is supposedly a normal sample. Healthy families. Right. Whatever, yeah. It's higher. Mm. So maybe that's part of the problem. Part of this whole idea is that the variance in the perspectives of these people creates the dysfunction, if we want to call it dysfunction. So I, think it, I don't think because we have different perspectives on the family, each one of us, in a family means we're not acting as a system. I just think it means that in order to get at wholeness, we need to ask more than one person. Hmm. I know that may not make sense, but... I but you I know what, it, it may not make sense to a lot of people out there, mm -hmm. but it's fascinating that, that, you, that it makes sense to you mm -hmm. and that, that it's one of the things you struggle with. Another thing that, that people who are watching these series of interviews mm -hmm. Uh, we'll, we'll hear Karen Wampler talk about messy problems. Yes. And uh, it sounds to me like you are tackling one of the messiest kinds mm -hmm. of things. You know, when I talk to Sandy Stith, she talks about uh, you know, her messy problem is how do you go to a government funding agency and say, I want to study violent couples and I want them in the same room and I want to stir up their emotions. Right. You know, I mean, <laughs> that's, I'm sure, how it's mm -hmm. perceived by them. Uh, but you're saying there's this thing going on, and, and we talk about it as systemic individuals, but we're not translating it into quantifi quantifiable research right. just yet. Right. And, there may, and that may be a function of us being still kind of rudimentary. I, I, I'm assuming this from mm -hmm. what you're saying in our understanding of, of st some statistical procedures or procedures yeah. that will get us to answer those questions. Yeah, I think, I think that's true. So do you, do you think that you're on the verge of pioneering something here? I mean, are we going to have a Bartle-Herring uh, uh, theory of dyadic or triadic 
nested analyses. No. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't have the background, the math background for that, but what I do have is conceptually I can think about it. And so what I keep looking for are um, analyses that fit with how I think about it conceptually. And that's why I went, you know, I got so excited about HLM because I thought, oh my gosh, we could do this. Um, Where it specifically addresses uh, phenomena nested within another phenomenon. Right, right. And then I've also taken the whole M plus series, not all of them, but several of them. And they do. M plus, they, M plus is. M plus, I'm sorry, is a, it's a software program, but it allows you to do all kinds of crazy stuff, mixed modeling, where, um, mixture modeling, I should say, where you have um, profile analysis, which I think could work with families, where you have, if you have multiple perspectives, and it will, f it, <laughs> again, with the hands. Hands. Yeah. It finds. And I moved the camera so I could get your hands in there. <laughs> it will find different profiles of families in terms of slopes and um, intercepts and things like that, so that you can actually create topologies that way. And I guess um, Randy Day and Alan Acock did that with the flourishing families data, where they not as theoretically as I'd like, but where they found profiles of families with high scores on this and low scores on that, and it had something to do with outcome. And so that's another way to think about it, too, and now you can do that with M+. Plus, so, you, know. you know, Suzanne, as, I, as I'm talking to you, I'm, I'm aware that there are maybe the majority of MFTs and even MFT researchers who are not, um, who find the social science area because they don't like the harder sciences, or they don't like the math, or they mm -hmm. don't, or, and they pick it up and they reluctantly drag their feet and they do mm -hmm. that. And I think, I think myself, I identify with that, but there may be others as well. Um, but you, you have embraced this part, um, and there's many of us who kind of steer away and we go to qualitative research because it doesn't have numbers, and mm -hmm. um, it's certainly not easier. No, but it, <laughs> but it's, uh, but it's not number filled, and, mm -hmm. and numbers is, and statistics are a different language, oftentimes. Mm -hmm. um, but you you seem to have embraced it. Yeah. Are we going to, I mean, maybe what we need to do is we need to start going to math clubs and start <laughs> infusing, you know, family therapy and get these great math brains to come and say, oh, now that I've, now that I've been yeah. converted to systems theory and I have these, yeah. ma this math brain that I can apply to this. Yeah. Do you think that would help our field? Do you think it would further? Yeah, I certainly, this, yeah, well, area? I guess it depends on your paradigm, you know, there's the whole positivist versus post-positivist, beyond positivist thing, so, uh -huh. <laughs> um, and so I really struggle with a mathematician who is more than likely a positivist, and um, then bringing him systems theory, because, uh, you know, it's too indeterminate. It may be too indeterminate for a mathematician, or they may love it, which is usually what happened to me. You know, the whole idea of systems and thinking this way came from what is it, quantum mechanics or quantum mechanics and and physics it came from theoretical physics, and yet we're still saying that. Well, anyway, um, so I don't know if there's a mathematician out there or a statistician. Trying to talk to statisticians has been really difficult for me because we don't speak the same language. Because mm -hmm. I am very conceptual when I think about any of this stuff. You know, I think about variance in circles. That's how I talk to my sorry, how I talk to my you know students about like, well, let's think about this variance. You know, <laughs> like it's a circle. Um, so I don't know. I really don't know. Obviously, there are people who've 